Hello, it's good to see both of you. And I hope you're here, um, you can hear me well. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Great. Um, I was gonna talk to you about um, week three. Um, I've graded everything, I believe. So um, the only things that I have not graded are the ones that, uh, that I give feedback on. So uh -huh. for, for example, week two discussions forum, if you didn't um, complete the whole, t uh, everything, all the tasks, then I would ask you to go back and add something. Um, for example, Tui hasn't um, done Professor Selim's um, essay. So I asked her to, to go back and add that. Um, so if you had a, uh, if you had a, a full score, then that means you're fine. Okay. So remember that the, the confusion part about week two was the Pi um, structure handout. So this Pi essay um, document requires us to, um, to, to highlight Professor Salim's essay that appears at the bottom of this handout. Okay, so many of you did not do this. Um, so this perplex perplexing um, puzzle essay right here, uh, you needed to finish this, okay? So uh, go ahead and if, if I asked you to do that, um, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, you should have received uh, 30 points for week two discussions forum. The, um, uh, oops, the diagnostic essay, I've graded everything um, that I got. If you didn't get a chance to submit it, um, please do so this week. Again, it's super easy for you to get 25 points. And um, as long as I see that you, you try to put a, an essay together, um, addressing the, both of the prompts fully, or not fully, but addressing it, that you're, you've attempted to respond to the prompt, then I would go ahead and give you 25 points, okay? So if you don't turn it in, um, you, you're gonna be out, uh, you know, you're gonna be <laughs> negative 25 points and that's not what you want to have right now. The quiz, uh, the scores for the quizzes are ad automatically recorded um, and the highest score, highest score of each, qu of each quiz is kept um, in your gradebook. And if you didn't get a 10, don't, dis uh, don't be disappointed. Um, even if you got a six or a seven, I mean, you, that's pretty much sure that you, did, you haven't read the chapters um, well, but it doesn't mean that a six or a seven uh, score for the quizzes will break you in the long run. They, they won't. They are just uh, indicators of how well you have read the chapters. And reading the chapters well can enable you to write the major essays well, also uh, to do the final exam and the midterm exam well, midterm exams well. Okay, so be, be a lookout for the, uh, the quizzes. So if you consistently get in a five or a six or a seven on the quizzes, that means you probably should read the chapters before you take the quiz. Okay. So week three, um, you have also um, three quizzes. Let me, uh, oops, let me uh, close out some of the things I have open. Um, hold on, okay, give me one second. Some of these things are slowing down my computer. So back to uh, week three, then we have uh, the required readings. Um, I've included very, a very badly done PDF of chapter one. And as you can see, the, the quality is so bad that um, it's just here just in case you haven't received your book yet in the mail yet. By this point, uh, at this time, you should have received it. Otherwise, here's the PDF of chapter one for you. I don't have chapter six on theme, so you're gonna need to locate that. 
Now, the lesson should be in your book as well, but it is also uh, available online. So just uh, type in the lesson. Uh, Bambara. And you should be able to locate it, the PDF format here. But reading it in your book um, will enhance your understanding of it because your book got, um, helped you understand this um, short story much better than if you were to read it online like this, okay? Um, <clears throat> uh, that you only use this PDF if you don't have your book yet. So uh, I got some tips here for you as you read. Probably you already know these, so no big deal there. Um, then when you're ready, look at uh, this quiz here. Let's do some re preview, shall we? 10 questions total. Um, it says here 20 minutes. And you have, I believe you have three attempts on this quiz. I could be wrong, it could be two attempts. Hmm. Anyways, uh, a man owns, owns a goose that lays golden eggs. The owner of this marvelous creature slaughters her to get the, the great treasure that he thinks is inside her, but finds nothing. What type of fiction is this the synopsis of? Probably a fable, right? Identify the truth. Uh, if you know what what a fable is, you probably need to look at chapter one. Um, chapter one, yeah. Identify the true statement about antagonists. This is not true. Antagonist can be a setting, can be a um, an object. It could be um, the story itself. Okay, so true true statement about antagonist. Yeah, this statement seems to be correct here. The first one. Okay, the story revolves around the antagonist's perspective is not correct. It revolves around the protagonist's perspective. Okay, so, so go ahead and uh, do the rest of this quiz based on chapter one. Um, is there any question on the quizzes or on your book or on the reading? Okay, once you're ready, um, I'm gonna close this out, hold on. When you're ready, uh, go to theme, and this is another quiz that enables you, helps you out with reading and processing the, the chapter, okay? So let's see for theme. How is theme usually stated? As a detailed description of the plot, as a summary of the plot, in general words, as an account of the literary devices at play. So, uh, those four, um, if you haven't read chapter six or looked at it, uh, at the definition of theme, you're not gonna be able to get this question <laughs> easily. So it would be just guesswork, so look at chapter six first. What's the main idea or larger meaning of a work of literature? That's probably a theme, right? That's the theme. Uh, and then if I had to choose statement about theme. The literary, in literary fiction, the theme is unmistakable, that's not true. A literary story has only one theme. That's not true either. In fact, li a literary story has multiple themes. The theme is whatever your idea or inside the entire work, the entire story reviews. That sounds more like my yes. This, I don't think so. A theme can, can, be, can go beyond being a more or less than, okay? So continue with the rest of the quiz and uh, see what you got. But please look at the chapter especially this chapter right here, chapter six, because as you uh, recall the diagnostic essay, um, the theme is a key word on the prompt, okay? So if you don't know what theme is, you gotta really be pay attention to chapter six. Uh, week three discussions forum is a little bit easier um, this time. There are only um, two tasks and you got, two videos to watch. <clears throat> um, so super enjoyable, um, but it's got this um, PDF here. But when you look at, at this PDF, um, it's got the dates set um, in, in the past. I'm talking about this slide right here. Okay? So this group work was done um, for 
my previous semester. So, so don't ignore this slide, okay? When it says group September, don't worry about it. This one belonged to um, my in-class, in-person class, in class uh, on-campus class that is. So we, we did group work, but for us, we're just gonna be mostly solo. So uh, view this PowerPoint um, in the format of the PDF, right, it's PDF. So um, try to engage with the, um, some of the slides like when the quick write asks you, what are the three most important lessons you have learned in your life? Perhaps you should write your responses down. Now, I'm not gonna collect these responses, but if you are able to follow and engage with the PDF, um, you get a lot more out of it. Instead of just glancing at it, okay? Like, like don't, don't do this. Don't scroll through it in a hurry like this. Slow down and then um, really think about um, the slides. So look at this plot uh, diagram, we call it a plot diagram. Um, we begin here with the background info, the exposition induction, and then the plot line rises up to include the rise in action, giving us suspense and anxiety, and it goes up to conflict, which is the problem that has been um, challenged. I mean, that's challenging the protagonist. And then it goes to the climax, which is a crisis, a moment of greatest tension, that it goes to fall in, fall in action, reaching the resolution to the problem and then the final conclusion. Now this goes hand in hand very well with, uh, with this video that, that is um, on the hero's journey. So it's around four minutes long, I think, but it tells us this um, archetype, um, like the archetypes as in the protagonist, the, antagonist um, and then the support, the hero support. So what makes a hero a hero, right? So this uh, video shows that it's gonna, have you seen this video before? Anybody? Does it look familiar to you? No. Mm. We're gonna be, um, com uh, we're gonna discuss how the lesson fits into the, the hero's journey, the, the cycle. So after you watch the video, you, you find out what, the, what this term means. Um, I, don't, I cannot get rid of this for some reason. So this is the exact video up here, but it's in smaller um, frame. So for, ignore this one. <laughs> I could not get rid of it. So I don't know why and how. But uh, so this, these two things are exactly the same. It's just one is big, the other is small. Uh, maybe a glitch in the code perhaps uh, with YouTube. Okay, so, so this um, TED talk, Susan Conley explains the power of story, how, how the story can um, transform students' life. Okay? It can transform anyone's life. So this is um, a talk about the effectiveness of fiction, why we, we are so interested in movies and uh, story and it lies at the heart of the human um, species or the human civilization right so she she has some wonderful things to say about that so watch that and then uh, follow the, um, the instructions given here to respond to and post your paragraphs okay um, so week three discussion is pretty simple then you're gonna need to submit your first response. <clears throat> uh, the pre-writing and outline, outlining response. So look at the, the rubric. It says that uh, as, as long as you follow instructions, you get full marks. If you don't follow instructions, I will just give you a chance to redo it until you get it right. So here's a, a link to the PDF that tells you what and how to do. I, I believe I explained this last week, but uh, I'll talk about it again. Um, you're gonna look at the required readings for week three, okay? Then you're gonna create, uh, you're gonna select one of these bullets right here, okay? I recommend that you are gonna select uh, a, a quote from the lesson 
because the uh, one of the choices for the first essay is the lesson. Okay. Um, you can also select a quote from chapter one or chapter six, but I would just choose the lesson to, uh, to write on. Okay, so select a quote that stands out to you, that makes a lot of sense to you, and write a quote out including where you got it from. Okay, so if you selected the lesson, then you write, oh, uh, you're in the light. Um, this quote from Bambara's The Lesson um, is, and then you write out a quote and then you explain why you chose that quote, why it stands out to you the most. Okay? Then, the next paragraph, you need to explain the personal connection that you have um, for, uh, to and for this piece of literature okay? by providing some specific example, example from your own life experiences. So you're going to need to read the lesson maybe twice because it is short. It's a short story. So say that you chose, um, you chose this. Okay. The last sentence of, of this short, short story, you write it out. And then you write, explain how your personal connections um, relate to this quote. What are the examples from your own personal experiences observations and reading reflect <clears throat> that quote. So number three is just making sure that you make connections from text to text. So does, does that quote and this story remind you of another text? Does it remind you of another story? It could be a movie you've seen, another short story you've read, something you've read for your previous English class, things like that. Okay. So that's text to text. And then the other connection is called text to world. Okay. Does, it, does it relate? Does it remind you of any of these things right here? Um, any larger issue that, are, um, that is going on in the world? So the formatting uh, requirements is it should be one full page long, one side only, double spaced, MLA format, okay, so um, MLA format uh, looks like this. And many of you did not uh, apply this format for the diagnostic essay. So I need to review it. And I need to choose the most um, updated one. Okay, so look at um, the sample paper here. You see, it's, it's double-spaced, and it's got your, your name, first name, last name. It's got the professor information. It's got the, the class um, information and then the date. Up here is the, the header where you insert the page number, and then you put your last name in front of the page number. So this should not be um, new to you. It should be a review because you should have done this for 1A. And then the title, original title, is in the center. Right here is center aligned, right? Come up with the origin, original title. Don't call it response number one. If you, if you call your, your work response number one, I'm going to push it back to you and say, please give it an, an original name. And then you write three paragraphs, okay? or you can do two paragraphs, but need, it needs to be one full page long. Okay? It could be a little bit more uh, than two pages. If you, if you want to write uh, a lot more, go ahead and do so but it, it should not be half a page long okay? or even a three quarter page long. If it's not a full page long, I'll push it back to you and say, please uh, write a whole page. 12 point font, United the Times New Woman or Arrow. Um, so that's just the standard format requirement. This little box, a uh, little row right here tells, tells you how I, it would be graded, but I tend to be very lenient in terms of grading your responses. So here's an example from, again, Professor Selim, um, who wrote her, her response on a, a short story called, uh, called The Doorbell Rings. Okay, so um, that's the response, but you're not write, writing this, this week yet. All you're doing this week is the pre-writing and the outlining, okay? Every time we, we do, um, uh, a formal writing, we need to do pre-write and outline. 
So this document shows you four ways for for um, ordinary normal way to pre-write. This is brainstorm. Oh, sorry. This is um, generate an idea. Okay. The first step of the of the writing process, you select um, one of these options to write to do your pre-write. You can do free writing, you can do brainstorming, you can do questioning or clustering, okay? So four ways, so you choose. Um, and then you outline, your, you outline your response like this, using this template, okay? Um, if you need to see a student, oh, I haven't included this here, but if you want me, me to post a student sample, I can. So go ahead and work on this. And if you want me to, I think I, I provided next week or on week four. I do provide a student sample on the week four. Let me double check to see if that's correct. Nope. So I could go ahead and add the, um, the student sample for you. Um, okay. So I'll do that later this week. But uh, for now, look at uh, this and then work on your pre-write and outline. Uh, when you are ready, um, submit your pre-write and outline to, to this assignment thread right here. Um, it should be no longer than two pages, okay? So similar to this. So I, I would imagine if you do pre-write, it would be like half a page. And then if you do the outlining, it would be like also half a page. Okay. If you need the page uh, requirement, roughly a page or two page would be should be fine. Um, then, when you're ready, look at this um, content page. It's just an FYI. You, you you don't have to submit anything, but just uh, just look at this page and look at uh, the information provided here to to get ready to write your first uh, fiction essay. Okay? So this PDF uh, shows you, tells you much more information about the fiction essay, which is the first essay that we work on. Okay? Now this essay will be graded based on its quality um, and also the, you know, the precision of, you, of your ability to follow instructions. You have three choices, okay? three choices, and you can uh, take a look at, at the choices later. And then the requirements here. Okay, so it will be um, for your reading, flash your reading <laughs> this week. You, you're gonna get plenty of time to work on the fiction essay and to think about it, but uh, this is there for your information. Um, again, this, this little, um, this next content page, it's also an FYI. If you need English 1L, which is the lab component for English 1A, 1B, and 1C, then you can, um, if you need additional help, you can register for, for this credit, no credit lab, okay? And the information is right here. Now, this page also explains uh, NetTutor, which is available via Canvas right here, right? So online tutoring, tutoring service for you. You don't have to be on campus, um, but you can get your tutoring service here via NetTutor. And I haven't used this yet, so I'm not sure how effective it is, but uh, I tried it one time to an orientation and uh, I had to wait for a while, so I didn't like that. Uh, but this page um, shows you how you can register and, um, and begin using the the free online services, tutoring, tutoring services um, via Canvas. <clears throat> if you need additional assistance via the EVC Campus tutoring, uh, tutoring Department, you can call that number or you can email uh, William Wing for more information on that. So this is just an FYI also. That would be it for week three. Pretty laid back week, but um, things are getting, um, I guess a little bit more intense this week because we have the re response and then also uh, front load and information of the fiction essay. Um, what questions do you have?
Okay, so no questions so far. Um, again, I, I will be available um, via Zoom according to our syllabus. Again, I think the next time I'll be on here with you guys would be Tuesday, tomorrow at 1, Thursday at 3, Friday at 2. Last Friday, I wasn't able to make it because I had a meeting. So um, apologies on for that. But, oh, you have a question? Yeah, do we need to attend like one time a week? Just once a week, yes. Okay. You can attend more than once if you like. But, um, but I would only attend more than once if, if I have um, more questions or if I need to show my professor something or get specific hands-on help on something, right? Otherwise, I would just email or text him or her or do the inbox message. Okay? But the, these meetings are available for, at your disposal. Um, I already submitted um, census report today. So you guys are safe, but I have to drop one person who um, did not show up or, or registered or logged on to Canvas at all. So I have to drop one person from this class. So we're, um, you can look at the people and see our class size, but I do need to keep attendance for um, early alert program, for the early alert program that I need around week, roughly around week six, um, I need to compile a report for early alert. So I have three. Um, when I, while I take attendance, think of questions and then I'll be able to address your question, okay? Um, then, um, oops, where's the, <laughs> here it is. Bow and die. So um, nobody has any questions really? Yeah, I'm actually, I have one question. Sure. Did you, uh, so you said you graded the diagnostic um, mm -hmm. essays? Yeah, Is there I any did. Way find, how do we find the feedback that you left us in the response? Oh, uh, <laughs> see the diagnostic essay, I, unless you, uh, you did something or you didn't do, uh, you didn't submit it in, I haven't uh, said anything for, for that assignment. So as I've stated before, the diagnostic essay was simply a way for me to see where you're at uh, with your writing. So I don't give you back on that. Okay. But but I do give feedback on the things like the response, right? And then also the fiction essay. If I if I don't write anything that you can assume that, that you're on the right track, that you did everything um, that I expect you to do. Okay, so I also try to use the, the rubric for for your assignments, but I need to be uh, better at that. So for the um for the response right here, this is how I, I graded using the rubric, which is pretty much um, a completion-based assessment. Unless you, you are totally off, and I, I would just ask you to fix your submission. Okay. Um, oh, I, I need to um, edit this because need, this needs to be the uh, turn, it, turn it in as well. Oh, no, no, this is just a pre-write and outline, so it doesn't have to be uh, on turn it in. But your, your final draft, oh my gosh. <laughs> my dates are still set, <laughs> set last semester. So glad that I, uh, I looked at that. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, I, I haven't given anybody um, who, I, who I put 25 out of 25 any feedback. So um, if, if uh, you haven't gotten any, anything from me, you're good. I have one more question. Sure. So for future essays that we turn in, are we going to turn them all in through turnitin.com? You're going to turn it in through Canvas. You're going to turn it into Canvas, but Canvas is going to be linked to turn it in. The formal essays will be done. Uh, we have to go on to it in. Okay. So, um, so again, for example, you're going to need to um, access for the fiction essay, right? So you go, uh, week, week five isn't, um, I think week five is when it's due, okay? But I haven't opened up week five for you yet, so you're gonna have to wait a little while longer. Um, but 
the weak force when your your final chapter of response number one is due. So, <clears throat> so you go to week five, you open it up, you open it up and, uh, oh yeah. And there's gonna be a, um, at the end of, of this thing, there's gonna be a, a button where you click and it's gonna open up a new window. That's why you're gonna submit it. So this is what I'm gonna do right now, Let's fix this. Okay, so wait for me a little bit and I'll show you exactly what I was talking about. Change the date. Um, October 1st. Yeah, it's gonna be available today. Yeah, all the dates are still set uh, last semester to last semester. So I need to, to set it again. <laughs> so I've published this, so you can see it. Oh my gosh, what happened? Hmm. Something is wrong with this thing, so I have to fix it. So let's go to Twitch essay then. Again, it, it's, uh, I have to redo this. It's not done correctly. So um, when you are ready to submit the final draft for response number one, next week I'll, I'll lead you through it again. Again, these this pages are not working well for me for right now for some reason. So I need to fix them. But yes, they're, they're going to be submitted via Turnitin. My question is, or well, I was going to have another question. Re, sure, uh, sure. That. So what's the... Uh, percentage of that uh, of, for the originality report that you're going to accept? Uh, okay, that's a great question. It's going to depend, even if it's, uh, let, let's look at the last topic, that's not the answer, for example. Um, 74%, which was where some of you had that, um, my color, color should be fine. Tyler has given me his permission to use his work. So he has 9%, okay? So when, when I have that, I see that, I, I click on this thing and it will tell me where, where he, uh, the matches are, okay? Include all the breakdown. So I review it. So clearly he has quoted everything correctly, even though the period should be after the, the page number. So that's just a, uh, a grammatical issue here, but, but not turn it in issue. So he has also put quotation marks here, 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 here. Everything looks like he's done, uh, he's done a, a careful job with uh, plagiarism. So, so clearly he's, he's not a, his 9% is not a problem, okay? So let me go to another uh, student who has high percentage. Um, can I, can we look at yours, Damon? Yeah, yes. So 5% is not, is not a worry for me. <laughs> if, if it is above 20%, yes, and then I look at it carefully. And then I, I consider whether it's just the quotes that you put in or is it you intentionally or unintentionally plagiarized. And I know that. A few people did that. Uh, Theodore, I can't look at his. Um, three, can I look at yours? Uh, yes. So three is 20%, okay? So um, that would be, you know, she would need to be, I need, I need to review her work. So I open it up and then it, I've already talked about her, talked to her about this and uh, she understands my concern. So this is not uh, acceptable right here because there's no quotation marks. And again, I've already explained to her and she understood me. This is okay because it's got quotation marks. This is okay as well with the quotation marks. Yeah, so I, I, I go around, I mean, I go through the, the document and I determine whether or not to reject it or accept it, okay? But 20% or more is to answer your question.
I, I, I look at, I look at, uh, I look at all papers with, uh, with plagiarism report. So, <laughs> look at mine. Okay. Uh, Tyler, right? Yeah, Bell. Bell. Bell has eleven uh, percent match. Yours is fine because you, you have used uh, quotes, quote marks, you quote marks. Yeah, Turn, Turnitin captures um, published work and as long as you, um, you put, put quotation marks around, around your quotes, you're fine, okay? Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay. Um, so, so what time? Oh yeah, the, the sense report attendance. That's all I got for you. Um, so as you work on your on your week three assignments, please reach out to me if you ever have any question. Uh, so, if no more question, I'm going to end the meeting. Um, do you have any question about the quizzes that you did last week? Nope. Okay. All right. Uh, good job then. Um, carry on and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care. Right. Thank you. Thank you.